I was the most recent visitor to uh, Ireland. Honourable Senators, the President. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to vouchsafe thy special blessing upon this Parliament, and thou wouldst be pleased to direct and prosper the work of thy servants to the advancement of thy glory and to the true welfare of the people of Australia. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I acknowledge the Ngunnawal and Ganbury peoples who are the traditional custodians of the Canberra area and pay respect to the elders past and present of all Australia's Indigenous peoples. Are there any documents to be handed by the clerk? I call the clerk. Mr President, I table documents pursuant to statute and returns to order as listed on the dynamic red. Are there any proposals for committees to meet during the sittings of the Senate? Again, I call the clerk. Mr President, committees have lodged proposals to meet as indicated at item four on today's order of business. Does any senator wish to have the question put on any of those proposals? There being none. Senator Di Natale. Mr President, um, I seek leave to move a motion relating to climate change. Is leave granted? Leave is not granted, Senator uh, Di Natale. Mr President, I move that so much of the standing orders be suspended as would prevent me moving a motion to give precedence to a motion relating to climate change. Uh, Order on my right. Miss, Mr. Order. President, Mr. President, what we've seen today is the total and complete capitulation of Malcolm Turnbull to the hard right of his party and to his big coal donors. A total, complete, and utter capitulation from a cowardly and spineless prime minister who doesn't have the ticker to stand up to the pro-coal lobby inside of his own party, to stand up to the likes of the Nationals, who are more interested in doing the bidding of Gina Reinhart in the mining lobby than they are in standing up for their rural constituents. We've got the Nationals over here who are basically in this place doing a three-year-long job interview so On they can right. nick off and go and do the, the bidding of the coal and gas industry. Let's have a look who's, who is part of the coal and gas industry in this country. It's a who's who of the National Party and the Liberal Party. Mark Vale, John Anderson, we've got Ian McFarlane. Of course, Labor's not immune. We've got Martin Ferguson on the other side. You know what today is, Mr President? Today's payday. It's payday for those fossil fuel companies who have given millions of dollars in donations to all sides of politics for one reason, so that we get so that we get a policy, an energy policy in this country that serves no one other than the big fossil fuel companies. This plan that the government's announced today, this plan will result in the death of the Great Barrier Reef. It will kill the Great uh, the Murray-Darling Basin. It will kill the jobs that rely on them. It will drive up pollution and it will drive up power prices. The evidence is very clear. The energy regulator made it abundantly clear that what would happen if the government had the courage to take on those big network companies, that we would actually make some progress in bringing down Senator power prices. Uh, the, the, the experts have made that abundantly, abundantly clear. The ACCC said just yesterday that power prices are so high because of market concentration. What we've got is a handful of energy generators who are milking Australian consumers dry, and what we've got is a government who says, we want you to have more of it. We want you to keep shafting consumers in the way that I've just shafted the chief scientist, Alan Finkel. Imagine Alan Finkel and what he'd be thinking right now. There he was, bending over backwards to write a plan with writing instructions from this government so that all he could come up with was a plan so narrow that would have meant more coal in the system by 2050 than business as usual, but at least there was some incentive for clean energy. And Malcolm Turnbull has turned around to the chief scientists and said, well, stuff you. 
We don't want a bar of what you are presenting us. We don't believe in science. We don't believe in what is absolutely crystal clear, what the business community are telling us, what the general community want. What we want to do is keep propping up the business model for our coal and gas mates. That's what this plan is. This is a plan written by the coal and gas industry that shafts the people that the nationals over here say they stand for. Regional people living in regional areas, farmers, regional communities. So instead, what, the, what do the nationals want to do? They want to open up more farmland for coal seam gas. They want to see more of their constituents having to fight those big gas companies who want to frack land, contaminate their water and ultimately turn Australian farmland into an industrial scale wasteland. And why do they do it? Because they're in the pocket of the coal and gas industry. They get those big checks riding in. That's why you see Barnaby Joyce taking international flights with Gina Reinhart. Senator Dean Natale, Senator Dean Natale um, could you refer to members in the other place? I've allowed you uh, on uh, more than one occasion now to refer to members incorrectly, so please refer to members by their correct title. That's why we see the Deputy Prime Minister, Barnaby Joyce, flying around the countryside with the likes of Gina Reinhart because he's more interested in doing the bidding of the mining and gas industry than he is in looking after farmers. The bottom line is that we have got thousands of jobs that are being sacrificed right now because of this government's commitment to the coal and gas industry. What we're doing is we're losing that great innovation here, going overseas, because we're locking ourselves into the sinking ship of fossil fuels. That's what it is, and it's a huge tragedy, because this could be a good news opportunity for Australia. We could be talking about bringing in jobs and investment and making sure that we've got a pathway for those people in regional communities. Instead, what this government has done is they've locked us into rising power prices, losing jobs and emissions skyrocketing. This is a disgrace and the Prime Minister should hang his head in shame. Thank you, uh, Senator Dean Natale. It would be helpful, Senator Dean Natale, if you could provide in writing uh, the words of your motion. I'm happy to uh, do that. that. Thank you. Uh, Senator Brandis. Well, thank you, Mr President. Another stunt from the Greens. Another stunt from the Greens. All of this uh, outraged, confected outrage from Senator Di Natale pretending to be the friend of working Australians. Pretending to be the friend of working Australians, this wealthy medical practitioner who lives in inner city Melbourne, retreats to his hobby farm for, for, for the weekend. Uh, every gesture, every posture of a left-wing hipster pretending to be a uh, pretending to be a champion of working Australians. Well, Senator Di Natale, I tell you what working Australians want. They want affordable energy uh, electricity prices and they want reliable supply. That's what they want. And there is only one political party represented in this parliament that will give it to them, and that is the government parties, the Liberal Party and the National Party. Now, Senator Di Natale, you spoke about an announcement. There has been no announcement, so your entire speech is based on press speculation that you have no doubt tried to trick up into a, 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 into a speech. However, I can tell you, Senator Di Natale, having come from the government party room a short while ago where this matter was discussed, that I'm expecting the Prime Minister and the Minister for uh, Energy, Mr Frydenberg, uh, to be making some announcements in the coming hour or so. And when those announcements are made, contrary, Senator Di Natale, to what you have just so foolishly asserted, you will learn that the announcement the government has made, which out of courtesy of the Prime Minister I will not be anticipating in these remarks, are informed by science, are informed by engineering, and more particularly are informed not are informed by the most experienced experts in the field. The most experienced experts in the field. But as I say, out of courtesy to the Prime Minister, Mr Frydenberg, I won't be anticipating in this speech anything that they may shortly be about to say. But what I can also tell you, Senator Di Natale, is that when the announcement or, is or made. Order. Point of order, Senator Di Natale. Uh, point of order, and this relates to addressing senators by their correct name. Now, I've heard Senator Brandis consistently refer to me as Senator Di Natale. Now, I know Senator Brandis prides himself on his diction. My name is Di Natale. 
not dinner tale. So if you would like to refer to me by my proper name, I'd be most appreciative. Well, thank you, uh, Senator Di Natale. You've, um, you've made that very clear, and I think the Attorney-General has heard you. I, I have, Mr President. I, look, I mean no offence, Senator Di Natale. That's just the way I pronounce the English language. I'm sorry that if my pronunciation is, is, is imperfect. But, in, in, but in, 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 any event, in any event, Senator Di Natale, the, what, what I can assure you is that when the announcement is made, you will discover that what has fallen from your lips in the last few minutes is completely wrong. Completely wrong. And you will be ashamed, Senator Di Natale, when you learn on whose advice and guidance the policy measures about to be announced have been based. Now, Senator Di Natale, and if I may, if I may address you and the Greens. We know the political game that you've been playing, and if I may say so, you've been playing it pretty well. What you've got is you've got the Australian Labor Party on the run. You've got the Australian Labor Party on the run because you are in a competition with them for the inner city green hipster vote, and you're winning. And you are taking the Labor Party to more and more and more extreme positions every day. Probably does the Greens a lot of good. It's devastating for the Australian Labor Party. But unfortunately, it is also a recipe for bad policy. So the ultimate, uh, the ultimate, um, uh, the, the, the ultimate victims of your political strategy, driven by ideology, and as the Prime Minister unkindly said the other day, driven by idiocy, are the Australian people themselves. We will be announcing a suite of measures, the effect of which will be to reduce electricity prices and guarantee reliability of supply. I know, Senator Di Natale, you have a problem with that, but the Australian people don't have a problem with that because that's what they want. They want their electricity prices reduced and the reliability of their supply guaranteed. And that is precisely what the effect of the measures the Prime Minister is shortly to announce will be. Informed by science, informed by engineering, informed by economics, but avoiding like the plague the ideology that drives you. We're not interested in green ideology, Senator Di Natale. We are interested in outcomes. And that's what the Australian people are interested in too. So that when the next election comes around in about 18 months or so, there will be a stark choice. The Green Labor Party Alliance, higher electricity prices and insecure supply, or the government's policies, lower prices you, and secure Attorney supply. Thank you, Attorney General. The time for your contribution has expired. Senator Gallagher. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr President. And I after those very unkind remarks by the leader of the uh, government in the Senate, I feel like changing Labor's position on, <laughs> on this uh, suspension. However, um, for good reasons, I think the Labor Party will not be supporting the suspension of standing orders today. I would point out that it, it seems like it's every, at the beginning of every Tuesday of every sitting week we have a suspension motion uh, by the Greens Party to. Uh, on the on the issue of the day to chew up to chew up time um, and without much notice I say probably ten minutes notice to other pe other parties that they are are going to be moving that suspension from Labor's point of view this is um, premature uh, to to basically debate or con to have a debate on a motion that condemns the government's latest energy announcement when that uh, announcement hasn't actually been made. And don't get me wrong, um, in terms of the failure of the Turnbull uh, government on energy policy, um, you know, we can debate that for hours and we would look forward to debating that. We would look forward to debating the dumping of the work of the chief scientist um, at the behest of uh, the former Prime Minister. For four years this government has trashed energy policy. It's turned itself inside out, fighting each other on climate change and energy policy. It hasn't been able to govern in the national interest, putting the interests of Australians uh, first. Uh, and I think it's fair to say we will all suffer from that, not just us in this place, but for generations uh, to come. And we, I think, certainly in the, looking at the different positions the government has had on energy policy, we remember the time when the Prime Minister supported a price on carbon, supported an EIS, supported a CET, 
you know, and all of a sudden walking away from all of that because the former Prime Minister and his supporters in the coalition party room not only hold the government to ransom, they hold the whole country to ransom and are still stuck in a vortex where, uh, where they're discussing whether the science of climate change uh, is actually settled yet. Uh, we will need to see the detail of the next iteration of the government's energy policy prior to uh, debating it in this place. Uh, as I said, the Prime Minister has had a, a number of positions. We don't hold much faith that this new policy will last any longer to those that have come before it. We want to see a responsible energy policy put in place. We want to reach agreement. We have offered for uh, our own preferred mechanism through an EIS. Uh, to talk with the government on the clean energy target. We did that very early after the Finkel report came out. Um, that was us uh, prepared to compromise, but unfortunately the government has refused to talk with us because they haven't actually settled the issue uh, between themselves. We want to see households given um, relief from the rising cost of bills. We want certainty in, in the policy uh, so that the investment strike uh, ends and, also importantly, so that Australians can get their fair share of the jobs that are being developed in a rapidly expanding global renewable energy industry. So all of that is for debate. And I note the Greens have all of Thursday morning um, for, as, as time for private senators' um, bills and business, where we could spend the whole morning debating the policy once the actual policy has been released and we have the detail of that policy. We are not uh, at all scared about debating the policy. Um, we welcome debate on the policy. There are a range of mechanisms within the Senate for which we can pursue that this week. Um, MPIs, urgency motions, questions, uh, senators' statements, uh, the adjournment debate and, indeed, all of the time on Thursday morning. There is more than enough time. However, our job here is to also progress legislation on the notice paper. Uh, whether we agree or disagree with that legislation, that is the job we've been asked to perform by the Australian people. This wastes that time. It wastes time for debate on other important bills. It is premature in terms of being able to debate seriously and honestly the policy that this government may or may not have finally resolved for themselves for the time being until it's nobbled by Tony Abbott again. Uh, but the form being used and the mechanism being used by the Greens to suspend the program today to have this debate prior to a package being released uh, is not appropriate and we won't be supporting it. Thank you, uh, Senator Gallagher. Senator Fifield. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr uh, President. Uh, I do uh, agree with the uh, manager of uh, opposition business that uh, this is becoming uh, a pattern uh, for the leader of the Greens uh, at kick-off uh, on a Tuesday uh, afternoon uh, to uh, seek leave uh, to move a motion, uh, and when it's denied, uh, to uh, and when it's denied, uh, to uh, then uh, follow through with a suspension of standing orders. Uh, the outcome of which uh, I think we can all predict. Uh, this has become a pattern. I think it's become a, a pattern which has uh, uh, disrupted uh, the, uh, the working of this place, uh, has disrupted government business time. Uh, there are uh, many forums, uh, many forms uh, in this place to uh, address issues uh, that uh, colleagues uh, wish to put a focus on. Uh, obviously, there's question time. Uh, there's uh, matters of public importance, there's matters of public interest, uh, there's uh, uh, general business time, uh, there are uh, uh, a range of, uh, of forms in this place uh, which are there uh, for colleagues to avail themselves of. Uh, so that's the, the first point, that uh, uh, this is not the time, uh, this is not the opportunity to seek to ventilate uh, these issues. The second point I wish to make uh, Mr uh, President, is uh, that uh, the leader of the Greens uh, is seeking to debate uh, matters uh, which are yet uh, to be put into the, the public domain. Uh, obviously, uh, it's a matter of record that uh, the government has agreed to uh, 49 of the 50 uh, Finkel recommendations and that we are going through uh, our internal processes uh, to, uh, to look at uh, other matters uh, that uh, Mr Finkel uh, 
touched upon. Uh, and uh, Mr uh, President, uh, as the Leader of the Government in the Senate uh, averted, uh, it is highly likely uh, that we will have more to say uh, in, uh, in the coming hours. Uh, so this would be a, an odd time to have a debate uh, for the Chamber not to be in possession uh, of uh, what the Government uh, has to say uh, later today. I also think, uh, Mr President, it's worth uh, just pausing for a moment to uh, reflect on uh, what the government has done uh, on the issue of energy. Uh, we're absolutely uh, seized uh, of the uh, importance of reliability, the importance of affordability uh, and the importance of uh, meeting our international commitments. Uh, since we've been in government, uh, we have uh, abolished uh, the carbon tax, uh, which uh, is the single most significant thing uh, to uh, address uh, affordability. Uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, President, I don't hear uh, calls from the community uh, for that to be uh, reintroduced. Uh, we have uh, obviously uh, made our uh, commitments in Paris, uh, which we intend to honour. Uh, we have uh, put in serious work uh, with the energy retailers, uh, and as a result, uh, consumers have been written to, uh, advising them uh, that uh, there are better deals available and that they should take advantage of those, and many Australians have done just that. Uh, we've also taken uh, steps uh, in relation to the domestic gas supply uh, to uh, ensure that that is met and that there is downward pressure there. Um, we have obviously instituted the, the Finkel uh, review, uh, which, uh, as I mentioned, we've adopted 49 of the 50 uh, recommendations. Uh, the Finkel, uh, the F the Finkel uh, review uh, recommendations went to uh, COAG. Uh, they then went to the uh, energy ministers, uh, and the energy ministers collectively adopted 49 of the, the 50. Uh, and we now have uh, an internal process underway, uh, which we'll have more to say about shortly. Uh, Mr President, uh, on this side of the chamber, uh, we don't take a, a theological or an ideological approach to uh, energy policy. Uh, we look at the engineering, uh, we look at the economics, uh, and uh, we, have, um, we have a plan uh, already, uh, which is before uh, the Australian people, uh, and we'll have uh, a little bit more to say very soon. Uh, about uh, the next uh, iteration of that. Uh, but, uh, Mr President, uh, the Greens have uh, not made a compelling case for the suspension of uh, standing orders uh, this morning. Uh, there are forms uh, in this uh, place uh, to address uh, issues, uh, and uh, we will all have the benefit uh, of uh, what the government uh, has to say uh, a little later today. Thank you, Minister. Senator Hanson-Young. Thank you. Well, we've heard clearly from the former Prime Minister himself uh, Tony Abbott, progress, today, uh, progress at today's party room. Clean energy target has definitely been dropped. Well, you can see who's in charge here, uh, Mr President. Tony Abbott, former Prime Minister, back running the show over there on the other side. Show. And of course, what have we had announced? The National Energy Guarantee, the NEG. Well, I tell you who's been negged, Mr President, and who's negging. It is Tony Abbott, former Prime Minister, negging negging Malcolm Turnbull. Do you know what a neg is, Mr President? It's a trick. It's designed to undermine somebody's confidence. This is exactly what is going on inside the coalition party room right now. Ten years. The former Prime Minister spent ten years trying to destroy climate policy in this nation. Ten years on, he delivers again another wrecking ball right through the renewable energy industry, right through households who have done the right thing, put solar on their roof, embracing clean renewable energy to bring down their power bills. This is an attack on Australians right across the country. Right across the country. Malcolm Turnbull has capitulated. He's been negged by Tony Abbott, and it's going to be Australians, householders and businesses that suffer. This is a terrible, terrible day for climate change, for the planet, and householders who want lower bills. Nothing announced today is going to reduce people's power prices. That is the only guarantee we've got. Thank you. Senator Seward. I'm outraged at this policy. I'm outraged that George Brandis could call what we are trying to bring this Senate's attention to a stunt. 
This is about the future of the planet. This is about the future of our children and our grandchildren. And he has the audacity to call it a stunt. I'll tell you what a stunt is. The Prime Minister's weak attempt, weak attempt to pretend to this country that he is doing something about climate change, that he is doing something about power prices. No, he isn't. He is just pulling a stunt to try and appease Mr Abbott. Mr Abbott, who thinks climate change is good for this planet, who is a laughing stock around the world, Mr Abbott is the guy who wants to, to throw goats in the volcano. He's the, the one that is trying to undermine how the globe responds to climate change. Mr Turnbull, owned, fully owned by Mr Abbott and big business, who want nothing but to make a few short-term profits at the, at the risk of future generations. That what, that's what this debate is about. And all the, the coalition can respond to is that, oh, this is a stunt, because they don't want to own up that they have com completely capitulated and own the fact that we will never meet our, our Paris targets now. We will not. They have handed the, the, they have handed Climate change, totally policy, totally to Mr Abbott now. They're the flat earthers of this country, they should hang their heads in shame rather than coming in here and try to justify their appalling policy. They are setting us back decades. They are condemning this planet. Thank you, Senator Seward. Senator Rice. Thank you, Mr President. We Greens have absolutely no apologies for bringing this motion to the, to the Senate at this time. Tackling climate change is the most significant thing we need to be doing in the world today, and it is absolutely critical that this parliament realises the urgency and the importance of dealing with climate change. The announcement that's being made today is setting us so far backwards in terms of propping up support for coal, gas and oil and destroying the ability of our country to be moving forward to an energy supply that is clean and green. I feel like I'm living in an alternative universe. I studied climate science 37 years ago. It was 1980 when I first learnt about the, the then newly emerging science of global warming. And in those 37 years, that science has just become clearer and more stark and absolutely more disturbing in terms of what the impacts on the planet and on the peoples of this planet is going to be. We know that we can be moving forward. There is an absolutely positive future for Australia that will be part of the global community dealing with the challenges of global warming so that we aren't looking down the barrel of increasing heat waves that are going to kill thousands of Australians over the coming decades. We won't be looking down the barrel of more extensive, more, more, uh, more extensive fires and not being able to grow food in our community. These are the, the positive future that we can be looking forward to. Today's announcement is just trashing that positive future. Thank you, Senator Rice. Senator McAllister. Thanks very much, Mr. President. And I want to start by observing that there is, of course, some irony for opposition senators in having the Greens bring this here today. Uh, Senator Gallagher outlined, I guess, our general objection at this repetitive procedural technique to uh, drag the Senate off the order of business that has been established and the discourtesy that that approach represents. But on the substance of the matter they bring forward today, I'll make this observation. We would not need to be having this debate today if you had brought yourself to vote for the CPRS when it was brought into this chamber so many years ago. There were opportunities and have been many opportunities in the last decade for you to support a serious emissions trading scheme proposed by a Labor government committed to tackling climate change, but you squibbed it. You squibbed it for a range of reasons, but my deepest suspicion is that you did so because it was electorally convenient for you. It was electorally convenient for you to maintain a point of differentiation with Labor. And if that meant throwing away the one opportunity that you had 
to establish a coherent global approach to tackling emissions reduction in this country, that was a sacrifice you were willing to make. It was a sacrifice you were willing to make for base political reasons, absolutely base political reasons. And you ought to be reminded of it every time this chamber comes back to climate change. I have spent a decade of my life fighting for rational climate change policy. I'm horrified. I am horrified at the debate that this nation has gone through over the last 12 months, and I am genuinely surprised to see a coalition government unable to commit to even basic principles of policy design around the national energy market. It's been hopeless. It's been embarrassing. But I will say this: the Greens have not helped. You have spent a decade trying to politicise this for your own purposes, and it has been at the expense of serious policy debate in this country. And there's no good laughing and calling out because everybody understands this to be true. Thank you, uh, Senator McAllister. Senator Rhiannon, you have 14 seconds in which to. Uh, October the 17th will be remembered when this country under Turnbull has turned their back on the Paris Agreement. 2,000 people came to Bondi Beach, standing or together order, to Senator, stop Adani. Order, Senator Rhiannon. Point of order, Senator Williams. Although Mr. the time of the debate is now concluded. Why does Senator Rhiannon refer to the Prime Minister as Turnbull? I mean, this is take down yeah, well, This is a common thing we complain about the Greens with their lack of respect for people in this place and the other place. Thank you, Senator Williams. Senator Williams uh, reminds us all uh, that we need to address people in the other place and indeed in this chamber by their correct titles and their correct uh, positions or names. Uh, the question now is the motion moved by Senator Di Natale uh, to suspend standing orders be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the noes have it. Division required, ring the bells.
Lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Dean Natale to suspend standing orders be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left of the chair. I appoint Senator Seward, teller for the ayes. Senator McAllister, teller for the noes. Order there being seven ayes and 49 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. I call the clerk. Order. Senator Wish Wilson. Thank you, President. My question is to uh, Senator Brandas, representing the Prime Minister. Oh, sorry, uh, Brandis. That's just how I pronounce it, Mr. President. Uh, Your question, Senator Wish Wilson. On my right. Order. Order. A key criticism Order. of the National Energy Guarantee, the NEG, is that emissions guarantee is not linked directly to the absolute emissions needed to meet our Paris targets. I note that a long-term emissions reduction pathway was recommended by the Finkel report. The government has not provided any detail on the actual reductions in emissions that will occur in the electricity sector due to the National Energy Guarantee, other than saying it will be in line with Australia's Paris targets, which you said today. Can the minister inform the chamber specifically of the year-by-year -year reductions that will be required within the electricity sector to meet this target? And if not, why, after five years of energy policy chaos and uncertainty, has this not been modelled Thank or you, already Senator established? Thank you, Senator Wish-Wilson. The Attorney General, representing the Prime Minister, Senator well, Brandis. Senator Wish-Wilson, the position is precisely as I indicated. This, um, uh, the National Energy Guarantee has been designed to ensure that Australia does meet its Paris targets. We, as you know, Australia has, co uh, has committed to a, to a 26 to 28 per cent 
reduction on 2005 levels by 2030, which, as you should also know, represents one of the most ambitious per capita emissions reduction targets of any country in the world. And the advice the government has received from the Energy Security Board, from Dr Schott, from Ms Savage, from Dr Pearce, from Audrey Zebelman, from Paula Conboy, the five people who have more expertise in this field than any other five people in this country is that the, the scheme that they have designed, the Prime Minister announced yesterday, will result in that very outcome. Now, I'll take that interjection, Senator Wong. Order, Senator Wong Attorney Sen General, a point of order, Senator Wish Wilson. Point of order on relevance, President. I was, I was very clear. Uh, I asked what the year by year reductions would be to meet our Paris agreements, and I asked the uh, minister to explain, if he doesn't have that answer, uh, why he doesn't have that answer after five years of energy policy chaos and uncertainty. Thank you, uh, Senator Wish Wilson. Yes, I will remind the Attorney General of the question. Attorney General. Well, Senator um, Wish Wilson, that's what I'm able to tell you. I'm able to tell you that these figures are that this model has been designed in order to meet the Paris targets, and it will meet the Paris target. Now, Senator Wong, you interjected before. Poor old Dr. Finkel. Poor old Dr. Finkel. This is what Senator Wong, poor old Dr. Finkel, as you patronisingly call that gentleman, had to say yesterday. Quote. The final thing I would say is what we have now and for the first time is strategy. We've previously had some tactical order, responses, we've had some policies, order, but by bringing— Order. Senator Wish Wilson, a point of order. An additional point of order on relevance, uh, President, but perhaps if I could suggest something a little bit different, uh, that Senator Brandis defers to Senator Birmingham if he doesn't know the answer to that question. Well, thank you. That's a matter for the Attorney General. Um, and uh, in addressing the point of order, the Attorney General did remark that he was giving you uh, the commitment to the Paris Agreement in his previous answer. But yes, I do take the point that he is, uh, is now addressing Senator Wong, and I would remind the Attorney General to address the question and not the interjection. Attorney General. Well, I've taken the interjection, Mr. President, as I think I'm at liberty to do. So this is what Dr. Finkel went on to say. What we have now, and for the first time, is strategy. We've previously had some tactical responses. We've had some policies. But by bringing all of these together, we're finally taking Australia's energy future backed up by gas and other elements of the electricity system into a strategic zone, and that's a great thing to see. We welcome Dr Finkel's Thank endorsement. Thank you, Attorney General. Order on my left. Order. Senator Wishwilson. None of us enjoy seeing your rulings being ignored. Uh, my second question. As part of the Paris Agreement, next year the world will begin assessing progress towards the Paris target and start discussing around increasing the ambition of every nation's targets. This is called the ratchet effect. It has been reported this morning that the Turnbull government has essentially set a cap at its current Paris target of 26 to 28 per cent by this policy. Uh, is this true? And if not, how do you guarantee under the NEG to rapidly increase cuts in our emissions and meet new standards? Attorney General. Well, Senator Wish Wilson, um, the Australia's commitment to the Paris targets, is a, as I've outlined to you, I haven't seen uh, the a statement made by someone you've uh, referred to this morning. But Australia's commitment to the Paris targets is, as I've indicated to you, and as I've indicated to you, the National Energy Guarantee has been designed to enable Australia to meet its Paris targets. Now, as I also said in answer to a question from an opposition senator, uh, by 2030. The uh, estimated um, uh, uh, proportion of renewables in the system will be up to 36 per cent, which you would acknowledge is a significant increase on the percentage of renewables in the system now. You see, Senator Wish Wilson, your party and mine have different outcomes. Our objective, our objective is to keep electricity prices lower. That is not your objective. It is not your objective, and that is a big difference. And unfortunately, for the Australian people, you've got the Australian Labor Party chasing you. Thank you, you, Attorney General. The time for answering the questions has expired. Final supplementary question, Senator Wish Wilson. David Blow is in the conversation today, stated that this new national energy guarantee is a second best option, and that our previous working carbon price was the best policy option as it avoided the need for a complicated emissions and reliability guarantee. 
Your Energy Stability Board has recommended that Australian carbon credit units and international units could be permitted to meet a proportion of the retailer's guarantee. Minister, have you actually returned back to carbon trading and what proportion of Australia's emission reductions will you allow Thank to be achieved you, by Senator international Wilson, carbon the time credits? For asking the question has expired. Attorney General. Um, no, Senator Wish Wilson, that is not the case. And Senator Wish Wilson, if you want to quote third party commentary on the announcement the Prime Minister made yesterday, might I direct you to the overwhelming weight of the commentary, which has been to support and indeed to applaud the government's decision. So in the Fairfax, in, in, in the Fairfax press, the commentator, Mr, the economics writer, Mr Peter Martin, to celebrate out of the ashes of failed attempts, finally a chance to put the climate wars behind us. Likely and similarly in the News Limited press, the distinguished commentator Paul Kelly made the observation in his opinion article this morning that the only people who will object to the policy that the Prime Minister announced yesterday are people on the extreme edges of the debate. That is a very good position for a government to be in. Because, as I said to you before, Senator Wish Wilson, our objective, of which we are not ashamed, is to keep electricity prices as low as we can. Thank get you, them. Attorney General. Senator Brock.